grace and peace be unto you from God the Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, I'm 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 joyful today. I'm joyful. Rich said, "The joy of the Lord is your strength." I'm joyful today in 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 the company that I keep. Let's just put it that way. That's important. Um, I like the fact um, that God has surrounded me with some some good, strong believers in the faith that's focused on the message of the Word of God. Because a lot of people are confused in in reading the Word of God. And I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, I may talk a little bit later on about the brothers that came on yesterday. I think we had a good conversation. I know I see in the comment section, somebody said we need a part two. Of course, we get a little thrown off sometime with our discussions. I think I'll just jump on here real quick and just say I thank God for everybody that's coming on, the brothers that share, and and that's important. Somebody said in the um, comment section, you know, often when we talk, a lot of people get the message confused. What's the message of the book? And I'm hearing a lot of all throughout the Internet. I'm hearing a lot of people say bondage, 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 bondage. I always I'm, I'm often hearing people talking about bondage and and we have to be careful with that. I'm a little I'm not going to lie. I start hearing certain stuff. It, it, my ears start tweaking I'm like, uh, uh that thing ain't even sounding right. Somebody posted in my comment section after the discussion late way later on. They said, who will Jesus judge? for slavery and that's my question to y'all today who will jesus judge for slavery it's so crazy that somebody would say that but i hear about a lot about bondage i hear a lot about slavery i hear a lot about white folk I hear a lot of bondage slavery and i hear a lot about white folk and you know some people would get upset at the fact but we have to we have to really look in the word of God. Are people moving in obscurity and going to places in the word of God and um skipping over the main message? Feeding women and feeding people, that's okay. That's important, but that's not the main message. And I noticed that there's a lot of people that's looking for what they want and they're addressing what they want in the Bible and they're calling it the word of God. They're addressing what they want and they're calling it the gospel. They're, they're addressing certain things and they act like that's the message in the forefront of the Bible. So I ask people today, is bondage and talking about bondage, is that the forefront message for the planet in the word of God? You know, a lot of people in the comment, there were a few that'll argue that salvation isn't for everybody, but hopefully most people come around on this channel, they beyond that. Thank God for elders. Y'all see, y'all see elder came on here last night and, 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 and he stood up for the message. I ain't talking about the zoo. I'm talking about true Christianity. And he stood up for the message. That's Elder Green. Thank God for Elder Green, Ambassador, the whole team, everybody that come through Dispensational Timbers on here, going out. I appreciate everybody that jump on here. All of the mods, it's so important that we have these conversations. And I can't lie, people all over, people in cults, there's people in that Christianity that don't like conversations like this. You know, a lot of people, they're used to just doing all the talking. They don't want questions to be asked. But for some reason, we we get a good bit of views. We get a good bit of people that come around and ask questions. We see questions were heavy in Jesus' day. But when he asked me about, um, about bondage and who Jesus will judge, it's just funny because we have to watch our hearts. We have to watch our hearts because Ritz said the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Even after you become a believer, you have the flesh, you have your heart. There's certain things, there's certain desires that you can have that do not line up with the word of God. Now, it's interesting to me that because the, the, the man me is shrewd. Remember, the enemy is shrewd. When the enemy in, Luke, in Matthew 4, Luke 4, when the enemy ran up on Jesus, he's quoting the word of God. When he ran up on Adam and Eve, he's talking about what did God say? He always wanted to deal with God, so we have to remember that. So the mere fact that the brother brought up that to me, he said, well, 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 who um, who Jesus is going to judge for slavery? I'm like, who Jesus is going to judge for slavery? Why would you just want judgment for slavery alone? And then I, you know, I brought up, I said, well, what about all of the, what about all of the parents that's hurt, that's broken because they got their, their children got caught up in drive-bys or in shootings in our neighborhood? 
And I noticed that there's a spirit out here when you bring up people's personal sins. Jesus said in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, he started off at home. When you bring up people's individual sins, they don't like that. They want to talk about the sins of another. And that's age old in man. When God asked Adam, the woman that thou gave me, and this is something that's always been around. So, so I'm seeing a serious problem because people want to look to other people. Well, well, it's the white man is the real sinner. God got to come and judge these white folk. And, and, if, and if these white folk leave us alone, we're going to be okay. And, and that scares me because that's damnable. So I said, listen, well, well, who is he going to judge? For some of that crime that, that that someone would gun down, and I've seen a lot of police tape from where I come from, police tape all the time in the hood. And most of the time, it's people that's letting them things go. Most of the time, it's people that look just like me and just like that brother right there. But some reason, we can't, we can't deal with that. But when we deal with the word of God, we got to look at some things. And this is the only thing that's scaring me. First of all, when we deal with real history, we deal with all of the facts. Slavery is old as almost as old as a human race. So, of course, I would ask a brother like that. What slavery are you talking about? Transatlantic slave trade that bothers you. That's the worst on the planet. The Muslim, the, 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 the Muslim slave trade. You talking about slavery in Babylon. Slavery is almost as old as the human race. Why would you not look at sin, which is the real problem? And it seems like the enemy is talking people out or, or showing people passages in Bible that's not the main passages of the Bible. What's the main stuff? When I when I look at Jesus, because we say we follow Jesus, and this guy say, I'm like Jesus, I descended from Jesus, and all that stuff sounds good. But what was Jesus' message? I'm going to pull something up on the screen here, because this is important to know when we start dealing with bondage, when we start dealing with this sin thing, Jesus always deals with people. And, and, and you do, but type of one, do me a favor, type of one if you believe that Jesus' message is the most important message. Jesus' message touched at the heart of man. Last night we dealt with um, we spoke about Jesus speaking to a speaking to a, a, a Pharisee, a ruler, knowing the Old Testament, and he couldn't even grasp the true message. Because Jesus came down from heaven. He said, I am the true bread that have come down from heaven. Y'all know that man shall not live by bread alone. So Jesus came on the scene. And when he was talking to Nicodemus, it's crazy that Jesus turns around talking to Nicodemus. And Jesus said, truly, truly, I say unto thee, you must be born again. How come Jesus didn't talk about them wicked Romans? How come Jesus didn't talk about Babylonian captivity? I'm talking about sweet Jesus right now. Why didn't Jesus go back and talk about how wicked the Pharaoh was? And you got to study history and understand the Egyptians are still around, but even the Romans ruling right now. How come he ain't talking about the wicked Greeks? How come he didn't spend his time? Because they, they just came out of not too long ago, that whole Maccabean revolt few years before Jesus manifested on the planet, why didn't Jesus spend so much time talking about Egypt and all the years that Israelites spend in Egypt? Why didn't he stress that and bring that up? Apparently, that's not the message of God. That's not the important message. That's history and that's in the book and that's good. But it seems like we have a people that's bringing up history and dealing with history and history and slavery and slavery and slavery. And they want to preach hurt and they give us a white image of Jesus and talk about all of that stuff. And it's like it's a diversion tactic from the real message. You must be born again. I don't care who you are. Now, you know, we're, we're beyond some stuff. When the people start talking about, oh, Israel could be born again, we fall beyond that. We know that Jesus, there's too many instances in the Bible. The Syrophoenician woman, there's too many instances in the Bible. In the Old Testament, God told you, listen, go, Jonah, get, listen, Jonah, go down there, get in that boat and go tell them, them people in Nineveh, tell them, repent. Too many, too, too much in the Bible. So we're way beyond that. We know not to grab one or two verses or two, three stories out the Bible and try to condense that. We know we got to look at it in light of the whole Bible. Distractions, come on, bro distractions from our salvation and the problems. So every time, and it's unique, especially when we deal with Christ and the message of Christ, it's unique in the gospel of John, unlike the synoptics. And we'll deal about the workings and the miracles and the power of Jesus and the ministry in which he did in Galilee and throughout the region. But John is different from Matthew, Mark and Matthew, Mark and Luke. We call those synoptic gospels because you could view those together. They all have the same story. The blind men, the leopards, they, Matthew, Mark, and Luke all have the same story. So we call those synoptic gospels. They're similar. They can view together. They all talk about the same thing. But John is different. John, Jesus is, 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 is a high Christology in John. 
You can't get it mistaken. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God and all things were made by him and without him was not nothing made that was made. You go on further down, it says, and the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. This is the Bible. So we see Jesus in a unique way. We see the seven I am statements. I am the good shepherd. I am the true bread that have come down from heaven. So John on a whole nother level from the synoptics, the synoptics are beautiful, but there are a lot of people that really love that gospel of John. And we have the most famous two sentences on the face of the earth for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And it's crazy because people are even attacking that and they're trying to make that say what it don't say because they don't want this thing for everybody. They want to twist the message of God. That's what we got people doing. We got people handling the word of God deceitfully. Come on, the great I am statement. We, we, what are we going to do with those statements? Because we know if we go back to Exodus 3 and 14 when he said I am and he started talking from that burning bush, that's a problem. That's divinity. That's another. That's a whole nother something right there. That alone, John alone tears up so much false doctrine we see on the internet. I'm talking about, I'm talking about good John. I'm talking about original Israelite. I'm talking about strong in this book. And, jo and, and, and John is important because John set it off for the Polycarp and others that came behind him and what we would call the church father. So we can trace this doctrine. We see all of this stuff in John. I want to pull up a little bit of John and we're going to see something. What Jesus really said, what, what's really important. That's what I'm going to share right here. Let me share. Let me see. I'm going to make sure it's on the screen. I want to make this a little bigger. This is the fourth chapter of John a woman of Samaria. Now y'all know the story with the Samaritans and how they were half original and the Jews didn't speak with him. That's how come Jesus gave us the story of the good Samaritan when the guy said, well, listen, who is my neighbor? And he started talking about a priest and all of the, and all of the holy people. And then he said, then he said a Samaritan came by and got the man that was beat up and bandaged him and took him to a hotel and left him there and said, if there's any extra, I'll pay on the way back. And he, and he used the Samaritan for a specific reason because they was on this race nonsense. Oh, y'all half breeds, y'all ain't original, y'all mixed with the other people. That bloodline doctrine, that nonsense. Y'all hear what Whoopi Goldberg saying, got to pull back with our statements and all of that. And all of this stuff is part of the enemy because what sin is going to do, what the enemy going to do, he going to plant certain things like, oh, there's different, there's different races on the planet. And more than any but one race, if we go, if we stand on the revealed word of God, what does the Bible say? Through one blood, through one blood. But these people out here saying something different. So he's in Samaria now. Now, remember, he sent his disciples away. He had to send them away because their minds wasn't right. He sent them away because he's getting ready to deal with some heavy stuff and they may not be ready for it. But Jesus is on a mission. Here beginneth the reading of God's word. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, give me to drink. God always initiates with us. When we talk about salvation, when, when the world was messed up, God came down and Noah found grace in the eyes of God. When Adam messed up, God came down. God is always initiating. He's always initiating this thing with us. Jesus said, give me to drink. For his disciples were going away into the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it that thou being a Jew askest me of a drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Now, Jesus ain't doing what everybody else is doing in the culture race and race relations and all of that stuff. He's breaking that because the kingdom of God is above that. So she shocked. She said, how is it that thou being, being a Jew asketh me? Because the Jews thought they were better than, y'all know how the Israelites are. Huh? They thought they was better than everybody. You have, you ain't original. Which is a woman of Samaria, for the Jews have no dealings with the Samarians. And Jesus answered and said unto her, if thou knewest the gift of God, taking her somewhere high, somewhere lofty. This is something spiritual. God is doing something at work in the earth and those that can recognize it. That's how come the rich said, he that has an ear. Everybody got ears. He that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying. 
to the church. Everybody ain't got to hear for what God's saying. Remember the religious people. He said, why can't you understand my speech? So Jesus said unto her, if thou knowest the gift of God and who it is that said unto me, give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him and he would give thee living water. So now here he goes again when he's talking to Nicodemus in the third chapter. We spoke about that last night and Nicodemus couldn't even understand it. Bible people in the book, not getting the depths of the message. The letter killeth, but the spirit give life. So now he's talking about water. He's sitting on a well. A well is sitting on a well because he's a well. He got a well springing up into everlasting life if she knew who he was. And this is what he's asking her. But she's sitting on a well. A lot of a lot of commentators, people feel that she came out of a certain time of the day because she'd been with a few men in the town. And this is not the time of day that women would often come out. But she was shamed. Shameful woman. Been in a couple of relationships. A lot of people don't want to. A lot of people don't want to be around the church folk because they shameful and had a few abortions. Shame. And there's a lot of us just walking around in that. But God will meet you in your shame. God will meet you where you are. So then she shocked. And the woman said unto him, so now he's talking about water, but it's not the water that she think about, but she don't get it. A lot of us don't get it in the beginning. And I don't feel bad. Nicodemus ain't even get it. This thing is deep. And the woman said unto him, sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. The well is deep from whence then hast thou that living water. How can you get me water and you don't even, and you don't even got a bucket to, with a string to go all the way down and dip that water and bring it up here? What water are you going to give me? Then we look where she started going. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well? She know he started talking about some stuff and she want to get into her religious talk. A lot of folk want to talk about religious talk and people get upset. But when I get around people, they want to talk about religious talk. I just let them talk. Let them talk. But it's something really deeper going on. They got other things going on. So the first thing a lot of these people do, they want to talk religious talk. And a lot of that religious talk that they talk in is fluff. But God wants to get down to the matter, the matter that's at hand which gave us and drank thereof of himself and his children and his cattle. I know the Bible. I know our history as a people. That's basically what she's really telling him. And Jesus, look what Jesus said. And Jesus said unto her, whosoever drinketh of this water shall never thirst again. Come on, God. He start going somewhere else. He, 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 now, the religious, talk, the religious talk is one thing, but God ain't, that don't really turn God on that religious talk and that you know your history and you quoting all this book and that don't really turn him on right there. He want to get to the heart of the matter. I got something for you and you need it. So just knowing the Bible in and of itself means nothing. Jesus answered and said unto whosoever drinketh of this water. He want to get back to the subject, shall never thirst again. But so whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I give him shall never thirst. But the water that I give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. So now he's talking about something else. He's water and he's talking about water. He's talking about something deeper. He's trying to show us something deeper. The woman said unto him, sir, give me this water that I thirst not. Neither come here to draw anymore. And she's slowly coming to it, but she's still a little confused because she's mixing that this water. She do know that she needed it and she wanted, but she's still comparing it to the water in the well. And she's thinking that she's never going to have to come and drink natural water unto, um, again. Jesus said to her, listen to this. Jesus said unto her, go call thy husband and come hither. Why would Jesus be talking about water and go straight to her husband? The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus want to get to the, he want to get to the heart of the matter with every single individual. Why? Like I said, why didn't he spend time talking about the Babylonian captivity? Why didn't he spend time talking about Egypt and bondage? How the, how the Romans had them paying taxes? How, how, how come he didn't talk about, how come he didn't talk about any of that stuff right there? This is a, this is a problem when we look at the message and we look at what Jesus did, then we'll look at the apostles also. What, what was the urgent message that they would, that was to be preached? And anybody that's preaching or discussing any message outside of that, it could be a little problem because if you're making anything else that main message, if you are a person of God, if you are a, a, a minister of the gospel, and, and, and part of the problem is y'all got researchers confused with shepherds. And now people out here researching and talking about history and slave trade and all that. Y'all have made them y'all shepherds, but they don't have the heart of a shepherd. They can't feed you like a shepherd. They're not hearing the voice of God to lead you like a shepherd. They're not. They're researchers. 
Don't confuse a researcher for a shepherd. The woman answered and said unto him, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, thou hast said well, and I am on. I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands. He get down our problem. Oh, your problem is sin and relationships. You try, it doesn't work. You try again, it doesn't work. For thou hast had 500 husbands, and he whom thou hast now is not thy husband. In that thou sayest truly, so now you don't you don't gave up on even trying to have husband. You just you just you just you just with men that right now. You just with people right now. He's getting to the heart of her problem. The woman said unto him, "When you really serious, you ain't gonna just talk religion all over the place. You gonna meet God where God is and what God is discussing with you." The woman said unto him, "Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet." Now she doing better. She's forgetting about that water. She's forgetting about that natural thing. And she's hand something in the spirit. Something is happening to me. I got to discern what's happening right now in this conversation. Conversations are spiritual. Jesus said the words that I speak unto you are spirit. I perceive that thou art a prophet. But she won't try her religious stuff because that's in y'all. Our fathers worshiped in this mountain. And ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Of course, remember, the Samaritans couldn't even come back to Jerusalem. So they set up their own thing. That's why we got the Samaritan Pentateuch and all of that. And it's separate. And it's separate from the other one in Jerusalem because there was a racial, there was some nonsense going on because of the sin nature of mankind. So she bring, bring up the religious thing. Y'all say y'all supposed to worship in Jerusalem and we say we worship over here. Listen to the master. Jesus said unto her, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the father. Ye worship, oh, oh wait a minute, ye worship, ye know not what we worship um, for salvation is of the Jews. Okay. And a lot of people like to read that and put and, and put their own thing in there. But the hour is coming and now is when true worshipers shall worship the father in spirit and in truth for the father seeketh such to worship him. He's going deeper. Forget this color. Forget this nationality. Forget a Jew. Forget a Samaritan. Forget a gen. He forgot all of that stuff. God is a spirit. I don't want to bang this table early in a moment. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. All right, she, all right, she in the book still. She's thinking and she understands some promises. The woman said unto him, I know, I know that when Messiah cometh, which is called Christ, when he come, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. That's it. That's it right there. That's contact right there. And when God makes contact with you, he's going to put you on the right path. He's going to bring you into the right biblical discussion. The same thing we see with Nicodemus. Should I go back to that? Let me show y'all the attitude, though. Let me read on a little bit. And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, what seekest thou or why talkest to her? But in their heart, they thinking, because they feel some type of. Now, remember, these old Bible thumping Israelites, they all steep in the book. But God is doing something. That's y'all to believe that God was manifested in the flesh in the man Christ Jesus. That's if y'all believe that, because a lot of y'all picking and choosing what y'all want to believe this day. But I'm going to tell y'all right now, it's very interesting that they looking, but they ain't saying a word. God is at work. They know Bible, but they don't know that they don't know the Bible the way they supposed to know the Bible. What do I mean? Nicodemus didn't know the Bible the way he was supposed to know the Bible. What do I mean by that? That the Bible say after talking to them on the way on the road to Emmaus, then he opened up their understanding that they should understand the scriptures. Read, you reading that Bible in vain if you just reading it and you're not reading it and being prayed to be led by the spirit of God in the Bible. You'll open it up and you'll pick on whatever your carnal mind wants to talk about. This is why we hear all of this bondage, 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 captivity, bondage. Did the original disciples speak on that? You don't think Paul knew the history of Israel? Did Paul spend his time declaring who Jesus was? These are fair questions. These are fair questions. Did, did Paul spend his time in the Bible just going back to Babylon and speaking about the wicked Babylon? And did he speak about Judith Maccabean, the Maccabean revolt? And did he spend his time talking about Egypt and Pharaoh and bondage and Moses and the children of Israel? Did he spend his time doing that? That's the question I ask y'all today. This is why we got to be careful today. We could be in the book and we could be deceived in the book. 
There's a lot of people that's deceived in the book. Berean, who is he going to come and judge for slavery? And what the Bible clearly makes it say, when he coming back, he's coming back to judge sin and unrighteousness. And I hate to tell it, I hate to, I know y'all don't want to hear that, but black folk that have not accepted Messiah, that have shot, killed other black folk out here, they're in just as much sin as anybody else, and they're going to be judged. Stop this damnable doctrine. Black, black people ain't big sinners. White people are bigger sinners. Slavery is the worst thing on the whole face of the earth. And God is just coming back just to judge white folk. And all black folk, there's a kingdom. And all black folk going in it. Just come on in. Just come on in. No, it ain't that, it ain't that right there. If you ain't got Jesus, I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your nationality is. If you ain't got Jesus, if your message don't line up with the apostles and the apostles message and you spending all your, I, we, we can go through the word of God and see what the apostles spent their time preaching and declaring, lifting up Jesus, lifting up Jesus. Do the apostles go through, did the apostles, that's what I'm saying. We got to understand that we, we preach the apostles doctrine. That's what we doing over here. That's what they true believer doing. This is how come I'm so shocked. That people would be offended at what the apostles preach, lifting up Christ. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men. He ain't say lift up Moses. He ain't say lift up Israel. I'm sorry he didn't say it. He didn't say it. I know y'all got a few obscure passages, but when the spirit was poured out on the original Israelites, what did they preach? Christ and him crucified. What did they die? They died for Israel. They died because they were Israelites. Josephus tell us who wanted to die because of the land, who wanted to kill and fight. But them same folk turned around and them same folk earlier wanted to terrorize the early Jesus movement. That messianic move it the way they wanted to terrorize them because they didn't believe he was the king because they was looking for they was looking for a literal king. Let me give you a little more Bible and I'm going to get out of here. Let me give you a little more Bible because we got to be in the book even after he trained his people. Even after he trained his people. Let's make sure we deep in that book. Well, let, me, let, me, let me find good scripture right here for you. All right. All right. I'm going to read some of this right here. This is the book of Acts. You know, the book of Acts was written by Luke. A lot of people argue that Luke was the only Gentile writer of the um of the of the entire word of God, to be honest. And he's writing, O former treaties, have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus both began to do and treat, teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he threw the Holy Ghost. Jesus' mission, when Jesus left, Jesus' mission continued through his spirit through his spirit coming down and giving commandments unto the apostles whom he has chosen. These apostles are Israelites. These apostles are waiting. They were trained by him and they, they were trained by him and they wait back and they went back and they waited for instructions to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days and speaking things pertaining to the kingdom of God. I'm going to spend some time on the kingdom of God and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the father, which saith he, ye heard of me for John truly baptized but with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. And this is very important because this is birthing something. This is birthing something new that God is doing in the earth. Now, remember, Israel already existed, but he said, listen, upon this rock, I will build my church. Jesus said, other sheep have I, I have that are, that are not in them. I'm going to bring them in. It's going to be one fold and one shepherd. There was something else that what God was doing. And we see trinkles of it in the Old Testament. We see trinkles of it with people coming to Israel. We see trinkles of it with who the patriots married. We see trinkles of it coming all the way down. This, this, this message here is for the planet. Anybody preaching anything different, let him be accursed. Um, when they therefore will come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, listen to the listen to the Israelites. So they still got some national promises. They still want to think of this. They got this nation thing going on. Will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Now they weren't asking him a whole bunch, harassing them whilst they were being trained in them three years, and people were even offended. They wanted to take him and make him a king. But they wanted to know: will at the world will at this time restore again the kingdom unto Israel? What did Jesus say out of his own mouth? What did he instruct? the original apostles, original Israelites. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times nor the seasons which the father has put in his own power. 
Now, if God made some promises, if you running around here preaching, teaching and acting like we're living in that time and he said, no, man, no, the day or the hour you're moving, you're, you're, you're playing yourself. You're playing yourself. You're saying that the kingdom of here and you're setting stuff up. The other guy said, well, Berean better come on in. I'm giving out applications and all this crazy talk, all this crazy talk. I'm following the original apostles, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. That's the message that he left them. And anybody that's preaching any other message, can I go Can I go to Acts, the second chapter, and when the Spirit was poured out, what them Israelites started preaching? What them Israelites started preaching? We got to make sure we're in the Word of God when we out here. These folk out here talking crazy, talking crazy. All, all I'm here is bondage, 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 bondage. He coming back to kill the white folk. He coming back to make y'all. That ain't what is just so funny, but that's what, what Peter, Paul, and James and them was teaching. That's not what they was teaching. So anybody come with any other message now, does the Bible have promises and, and other things going on there? Absolutely so. But for some reason, I don't see the apostles pushing that and putting that in the Gentiles faces, putting that in everybody's faces. They said the wall of partition was torn down. I see folk building some stuff. It's madness. Y'all build people going backwards. They building what God is torn down. What doctrine is this? Come on here, my man. Come on there. My people talking good. They say, what doctrine is this being taught? What's this? What's this being said? We lifting up Christ and Christ only. We ain't lifting up the slave trade. That's emotionalism. That's emotional trick to trick people out of the promises of God. Now, when I say the promises of God, what do I mean? What did he declare? What did his apostles declare? What is the mission for right now? A lot of y'all changing the missions. I ain't getting that. Listen, where are we getting our marching orders from? Y'all just reading the book or you getting marching orders from the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost told you to put down Jesus, that's milk and lift up Israel and lift up kingdom and lift up applications and who going to be your slave? That's what Peter, James and John and them did. We got to be careful. We got to be careful. All I'm saying is we got to make sure that we're following after the disciples were filled with the Ruah, with the spirit of God. We got to make sure we're not deviating from their message. We got to make sure we're not deviating from their message until the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled. Have anybody proven that have Christ come to you in a vision to the time of the Gentiles is over? When Christ come, Christ going to make all that right. Folk run around talking about application. We're going to gladly take off our crowns. We're going to gladly serve the Messiah. And you should have the same attitude. All right, y'all. Let me get out of here. Y'all want to hit me? Hit me at bereanteachgmail.com. Um, we're going to get a jump in tonight. We're going in on the Patreon. God bless. I pray that you have a clearer understanding of the word of God. Talk to you later.